I feel like what frustrates me is the ways in which like we can't grasp that colorism is just as big, if not bigger, of a systematic oppression as racism. So when y'all try and like use success and use desirability and use the things that you've gotten to get your way out of experiencing these things, it's really ignorant. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Maya's world. Okay, everyone, I wanted to make a really quick video about what is going on with Kiki Palmer, Zendaya, and colorism. But before I get into any of that stuff, I wanna just shout out to me for wearing this outfit. Um, I try really hard to incorporate a lot of indigenous, West African things into my fashion. And something that I'm really fascinated by is the different fabrics that we actually create in Nigeria. This is from um, a Northern part of Nigeria called Kano. I forgot the name of the fabric, which is kind of embarrassing, but I like it because it reminds me of Adire, which is a, um, indigenous to us in like the Southern part of Nigeria. And it's really cute. It has, I feel like it has these little corals on it. I don't know if you can see, but it just looks really futuristic. It's giving, it's giving sci-fi. I have been going through a really rough time, um, which I will probably discuss on my Patreon, but I just want to talk about this specific issue because when I saw this, um, it came up in my feed, when I saw what was happening with Zendaya and Kiki, it really triggered me and I wanted to unpack why the discourse is making me very uncomfortable. So if you guys don't know, um, Kiki Palmer is a very famous actress. She is a singer, she is an actor, she is a entertainer. A lot of the memes that we know comes from Kiki Palmer. Like she's definitely been a staple in pop culture. So a tweet came out um, by someone called NBA Gladiator and they wrote, I'd like someone to do a deep dive on the similarities and differences between Kiki Palmer and Zendaya's career. This may be one of the clearest examples of how colorism plays out in Hollywood. They were both child stars, but their mainstream popularity is very different. So that was the tweet that started all of the freaking discourse um, that we know of. When I saw that that was tweeting, I felt, how do I say this? So my first thought was, when I think about like colorism, particularly colorism and how it affects dark skinned people, uh, Kiki isn't necessarily somebody that comes, like the first person that comes to mind. I think of somebody like Coco. I feel like comparing somebody like Coco to Zendaya could have been more accurate because Coco is dark skinned. You know, I feel like discourse around colorism, I find it really frustrating the way that we have it in main, with like mainstream culture because I feel like people are always trying to rebuke that it's real like people i feel like discourse around colorism is almost trying to prove that there's not like that it's made up in our heads like for them to say oh is is kiki palmer's career not as good as zendaya's because she is unambiguously black like if you understand how systematic oppression works the lighter you are the more privilege you have the darker you are the less privilege you have so that shouldn't really be debatable so my thing is like are we debating that we believe that lighter skinned people have more privilege i think that should be the question not is kiki palmer not like it puts all the pressure on kiki palmer and not enough pressure on zendaya an example of ways that we could have rephrased this question that wouldn't put all the pressure on Kiki Palmer and puts pressure on Zendaya would be, what are the ways in which Zendaya's biracial privilege shows up in Hollywood? And if we wanted to have discourse on colorism, we could even ask, what are ways we can show up better for actresses like Coco Jones, right? Like there's a way that we can f ask questions about colorism that still helps dark skinned people and it also still openly accepts that light-skinned people have privileges. Like, I don't know why we're expecting Kiki Palmer to have all the answers and it puts a lot of pressure on her to confront why her career isn't like Zendaya's. And I feel like that is something that I've noticed and I feel people do this because they want to constantly get a rise in emotion out of us. And when I did see this discourse, it made me very uncomfortable because why are we still asking if it's, if 
light skinned and biracial people have more privilege than unambiguously black people? The answer is yes. I don't know how many different kind of think pieces you need. I don't know how many different kind of strategies or like fun ways that people need to hear that. But the answer is always going to be yes. The closer proximity you have to whiteness, the more the more privilege you're gonna have. Like, I don't, are we having this kind of discourse around white whiteness in itself? Like, do we say like, do white people have more privilege than blacks? No. So why do we continue to perpetuate that with colorism? And it's because I feel like people really like to antagonize dark skinned people. People really like to antagonize black women, black non-men, because they know that it will get a rile out of us. And yes, of course, I am someone who was riled up from reading it. But what was making me mad about the discourse was just like how, when Kiki Palmer did respond, and she said, a great example of colorism is to believe I can't be compared to anyone. I'm the youngest talk show host ever, the first black woman to star on her own show on Nickelodeon, and the youngest and first black Cinderella on Broadway. I am an incomparable talent, baby, this is Kiki Palmer. I mean, sure, sure, okay, why not? But listing your achievements doesn't take away systematic oppression. And that is what always gets me about this conversation is y'all feel like showing that you're impressive means that you don't experience anti-blackness. Like, yeah, baby, I have 40,000 subscribers. Also, thank you for everyone who has subscribed. Doesn't mean that I don't experience colorism. Like it's, it, it's about intersectionality, you guys. Like we all carry different things. Like I have certain things that even though I am dark skin, I am black, there are certain things that I have privileges in and certain things that I have disadvantages in. But it doesn't mean that it's taking away from my talent. And I think that is the, the frustration with this conversation is that people act like admitting that things is harder for you takes away that you have talent in general. And what also pisses me off is the blogs that wanna be like, oh, Kiki Palmer eight, or the people that wanna be like, oh, you see, yeah, like, boom. It's almost using it to be like, ha, see, colorism isn't real. We just need to like, remember that she's successful. No, like comparison is how we find out things, you guys. Like when people compared Beyonce to uh, Taylor Swift and no one has issues when Beyonce is compared to Taylor Swift. No, people are saying that Beyonce should be more successful, sell more shows than Taylor Swift. People, people agree with that, but y'all really stop your a activism and your defense when it comes to unambiguously black people and it comes to dark skinned people. Like, like, I don't know. I feel like what frustrates me is the ways in which like we can't grasp that colorism is just as big, if not bigger of a systematic oppression as racism. So when y'all try and like use success and use desirability and use the things that you've gotten to get your way out of experiencing these things, it's really ignorant. <laughs> and of course I don't blame, like I'm not looking to Kiki Palmer to give me discourse on colorism. I'm just not like, Kiki Palmer is like a fun girl. I don't know her personally. You know what I'm saying? I like her, I like her memes. But like, I feel like people, reference them to be like well if kiki palmer is not experiencing it then what you're using what you're saying is made up and i feel like her response is making it more difficult for people to have actual discourses around colorism around anti-blackness and what also always annoys me is like i see that kiki palmer responded but like zendaya never responds like zendaya has had so i've seen so many memes and so many things on the internet about how zendaya takes up so much space with taking a lot of roles that are meant for unambiguously black people and like zendaya doesn't have to respond because like that's how also colorism shows up is that you don't have to defend yourself as hard as the person who's on the receiving end like this commentary affects more kiki than it would zendaya because zendaya is still going to be booked and busy kiki wants to prove that she is that girl and nobody was saying she wasn't that girl but we are saying that anti-blackness has definitely affected her career in hollywood i also just want to double down that it is a privilege to not have to actually address colorism zendaya has released very few articles speaking about her privilege being biracial i think the last article that she spoke about was a couple years ago and that just shows that she can just accept it and admit it and it doesn't necessarily take away from her career or from her like her accepting or admitting to having privileges doesn't actually affect her workload but if someone like kiki was to say yeah you know what it is actually harder 
being um, an unambiguous black person, people will call Kiki bitter. So what this does is that it creates this um, kind of uneven balance where Zendaya doesn't really have to speak on issues and the black person is expected to explain why her career is where it is. And for me, I just want us to pivot out of always having the same kind of conversations. What I try to do to make soothe myself with the experiences I do have within colorism is I try to center dark skin non-men, dark skin women in everything that I do. I look for dark skin singers I like. I look for dark skin actresses and people in movies. I look for dark skin creators or dark skin just people doing things and I pour my investment into that. I have completely decided to just divest away from proving that we are experiencing something more than what others are. Like if you're not with the program, bitch, you're gonna get left behind. And I'm okay with leaving people behind now. I think before I would be like, no, like it's real. But now if you guys aren't gonna see that it's real, it's gonna be very embarrassing for you when your grandchildren see the kind of fucking vicious, violent things y'all are putting out on the internet, diminishing and downplaying the experiences of dark skinned people. Like that's between you and you. Me and minds, we're trying to move forward and stop having discourse on if colorism is real or not and just framing it and phasing, phrasing it in really different ways. Like it's real. Yes, Kiki Palmer will experience more anti-blackness than Zendaya. Yes, that will affect your financial and monetary gains. Yes. So what now? In my Azalea Banks voice, like what do we do about it? Like, and I can see how um, Kiki Palmer would be uncomfortable by this because having her compared kind of makes you feel like people are seeing you as inferior to somebody so i see why her response is the way it is but y'all who are trying to be like oh she ate shut the f up shut shut up <laughs> like we don't always have to to respond with her like cool kiki that was what made you feel comfortable with how you handled like someone putting you out there but it doesn't change, like having discourse doesn't mean it's negativity. And like this whole thing of being like, oh, you guys just wanna be negative, oh, you guys just wanna be drama. That's already what we tell dark skin people when we do speak out about colorism. So having this discourse, comparing things in pop culture is very normal. I feel just really fed up with how we have conversations. I want us to move past asking if colorism is real and asking how can we show up better for dark skin people in the future. Boom. If you made it to the end of this video, let me know which part of my outfit is your favorite. I always do this in the end, but I just really like the affirmations. And I also wanna thank everybody for getting me to 40,000 subscribers. I know I mentioned that in the middle of the video, but I'm very grateful for everyone who supports my work and just shows up for me. So I wanna say thanks. Have a great day. Bye.